and I'm a graduate software engineer at Smash Life. Um, so where this all started um, was by watching old TV shows and films. So watching Cher go to her wardrobe in Clueless and getting her outfit picked out for her for the day. Or seeing Robin Williams waking up in the morning in the movie Flubber and seeing his breakfast getting created for him, his eggs, his bacon. How did the machines know if he wanted crispy bacon or soft eggs? So interesting. So I was really just thinking, how much of my life could I make easier by making everyday things automated? So over the past few weeks, I've been using the Azure Cognitive Services platform in my own time. So these are algorithms that Microsoft have developed in order to solve AI problems that developers are having. Um, there are many different types. Um, there's the Computer Vision API, Cognitive, ser um, sorry, the Emotion Detection API, Face Detection API. There's so many out there. So the first one that I started using was the Custom Vision API. So this tool came out in April, on April 2nd of this year. So it's fairly new. And what it does is it lets you build, deploy, and improve image classifiers. So it lets you actually train your data models before putting it into any other services, such as the computer, um, the computer vision service that Azure also um, let you use with it. <coughs> So the first thing I did was that I wanted to upload all of my photos onto the computer vision service. Um, and one, of the, one of the real problems that I had at the very start was that I was facing a lot of unbalanced data. So a lot of dresses were getting confused with coats. And you don't want that because you don't want your app telling you to wear just a coat to work that day <laughs> if it's a winter day. <laughs> Um, so I really wanted to use my own custom vision tool before using the computer vision tool because the computer custom vision tool lets you build out your own model. The computer, the computer vision tool doesn't let you do that and it makes you use predefined models that Microsoft have already built themselves. So I really wanted to take a step back and look at really how models were built up and how to train these models. So Whenever we send this data to the Azure platform, they run capable cross-validation, and that will get back performance and recall back from your model to tell you whether or not it's good, whether or not it's accurate, whether or not the, um, the model has predicted it accurately. Um, and so I've built a small application. Just whenever we send a photo of an item of clothing to that application, it will give back a prediction of what type of clothes, clothes, what type of item of clothes that is. So I can give you a small demo here. So right now we're sending about 100 images to the Azure platform, so I don't know how well this is going to fare on the Wi-Fi. So it's trained the model. So it's successful. Pardon? So it's all different types of images of dresses. So at the very start, I built up a model of dresses, t-shirts, jeans, all different types of clothes. And now, because I want to really drill down into the specifics, so I want to select winter clothes, summer clothes, spring clothes. So now here we can see that the image that I uploaded as my test image, it's um, come out that it's 99.9% .9 a winter dress. And it is. It's this dress right here. Nice. <laughs> so. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so. <coughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I heard they're being really good today to everyone. <laughs> so. Um, So here I just have a couple of snippets, and here we create a custom vision training client called Training API, and all that is is just the API and the base URL that Azure provide whenever you create your resource group. So then you create tags, so the summer dress tag and the winter dress tag, and then you'll assign those tags to, the image, to images in your, file, your local file system. 
and those are the images that you then upload to Azure. So those images are tagged by their file names. So the file name will have summer dress or winter dress and whenever it uploads that file, it will tag that image or all those images in that and that's how they're trained. So then to be able to give back the response, what we do is we go to the custom prediction endpoint and we get back the, um, the JSON response that's given back. And then I just had a, a simple console wrote li right line of whether or not it's a winter dress or a summer dress. Um, so what, what can we do with that model once it's trained? We can export it as a, Linux, as a Linux Docker file and deploy it onto Azure as an IoT Edge service. And we can create an app that will choose three outfits based on ones that I have tagged that I like or don't like. I can do it based on weather predictions and connect it to a weather API. I can also run this through computer, the computer vision service to start building out object detection applications. So last weekend, I just created a very simple computer vision um, demo as well, just to show what it, what it really does. It's very interesting. So um, this is a tool used to get um, rich data and information out of images. So whenever you run an image through, we will get a result of tags back, and we will also see a result of a woman wearing a yellow dress. So we can manipulate these, these strings to kind of say what we want out of the tags. And we can also go into the tags and we can also say that to find things like clothing and yellow or woman, a man, or dress. And we can say everything that is that item, we want to pull that into our own database so we can constantly learn and train these images once we're uploading it. So basically we just have a HTTP request to the computer's vision service, which includes the image file. The file must be read as a stream object and it must be serialized into a base 64 string and wrapped into a byte array. And this is the same for, for a lot of the custom, of a lot of the um, Azure cognitive services because we're sending files into um, image files and we can also send video files as well and get frame by frame information out of every um, frame, yeah. <coughs> so um, we can get our JSON response back and we don't have to do this for everyday objects. We can also do this for text as well. So here I had run um, a piece of text if we manipulated um, the base URI to change to a different endpoint and then if we um, go through for each region, so it's saying for each kind of place where it finds text, go through, pick out the text and print it in a line. And yeah, we can see here that it comes back, um, can you see me now? So, um, so let's stop that. So here straight away we got back. Hello NI Dev. It is nice to speak to you today. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's everything. So the plan for next is to, um, to combine the custom vision API and the computer vision API to be able to get back my images to say obviously the application to predict my three images every morning. Um, yeah, um, at last weekend, um, have, have you all seen Silicon Valley? Or have any of you seen Silicon Valley? I made a small application, um, hot dog, no hot dog. Um, so we can do that as well. So we can take images of hot dogs in our hands and hot dogs not in our hands <laughs> and then scan hundreds of images and see if there's a hot dog in the image or not. <laughs> it's quite funny. So, so does, the, does Azure's service know what hot dogs look like already? Um, that there's what the custom vision um, before it is for. So then whenever you're putting a tag in that there's a hot dog in the photo, 
and then the, you take a photo with no hot dog in it and you tag it as no hot dog and then you have to train your classifier so you have to train it to say these are all the images that have no hot dog in the photo and these are all the images that have a hot dog in the photo and then from that it'll be able to kind of recognize the shapes of like sausages and baps and kind of all that type of thing and pick it out of the images Amazing. yeah Pardon? There's a tactic where you have to collect the, uh, uh, the sign post or the uh, traffic lights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. You do the same thing for the letters, for the quarters. Do you get the penny for the different quarters? Yeah. So, so different shapes, yeah. Yeah. Um, Definitely, yeah. So um, a problem that I had at the very start was that I took a lot of photos off closing websites. But closing websites don't actually let you see really like material or what a dress looks like from the side or from certain angles. So I had to like sit and take photos as well of like me standing in different <laughs> angles everywhere of like wearing the same item of clothing. So it would be able to kind of get more precise. And every time that you build that, it's a new iteration and it gets smarter every time and it just it trains your data up every time. It's really brilliant too. Yep. So we can see here in this slide, the result it got back was yellow, dress, woman. And this was just all from the computer vision predefined model but I could use this for my own model and I would be able to get the tags that I put in. So I like this, I don't like this, things like that. And those are all the tags that you determine so they track each other as a man, man and woman. Yeah, so um, as you can see, the predefined models from Microsoft, I'm gonna say it, aren't very smart. So it's really good that they brought out this tool that we can train our own data and be able to use the two together because before, the computer vision tool never had custom vision before because it was only like in April. So, yeah. So, you had a question? Yeah. Yes, um, facial recognition. So, there's another endpoint to use. Um, I haven't played about with it yet, but I know a couple of people who have. Um, it's able to recognize your face and tell you whether or not it's a man, a woman, a child. It will give um, a, an age back of a person, like, kind of like an estimate age. It's not always right. <laughs> um, and also it can detect emotion. So you can run images of like people in pain or like people sad, people happy, and it would run that through and, and tell you as well. So you could hook that up to the Raspberry Pi. Um, and there's a lot of libraries as well that um, for the Raspberry Pi with that. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? I was looking at it, yeah. At the moment, brilliant, but uh, seems to be on the Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. and it's brilliant. Yeah. It does the, you know, the emotions as well. So. Yeah, very good. So last year, my final year project was um, a Raspberry Pi application that I created for my dad, and I had sensors attached to it, and it was connected to an Android application. And um, whenever his garden, he put it out in his garden, and um, the sensors detected water, fall, like the water in the soil. And um, whenever it dropped below a certain threshold, it would give my dad a notification to his phone, your plants need watered, they're gonna die. <laughs> so he had an allotment away from the house. So it saved him time and money. But I was thinking about doing stuff like this for him to be able to get um, like analytics, or, like our analytics or estimates out of when to water plants. So it can really be, used for everyday things. Yeah. I, I will buy it's really that. dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> I'd sell you it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have it connect to your system and then it doesn't work. Yeah, I would like that. Yeah. <laughs> and there are lots of models already already built, so you don't have to build your own yeah. thing. So yeah. you can use a Kobo, you know, common object in context. Loads of models there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like the one thing was building up the model. There were so many photos I had to take and I never realized how big the data would actually get and how long it would take me to gather all the data. 
so something you think about. Is this free for a set level or is this free pay, pay for all the um, It's yeah, a free trial I used. I used free trials um, and, I, and I get Azure credits and work as well. So I've been using them. I accidentally created a Azure service and let it waste 40 pound of it. <laughs> <laughs> Great, that's everything, yeah. That's really great, thank you so much. Thank you very much, thank you.